Hey guys, Robin here. I'm 31 years old, live in the Netherlands and last year in 2020 I made $271,792 in revenue after VAT. 95% of this number came from me selling my four self-published books. In other words, I made $259,463 from selling my four self-published books. So these books are about puppy training. I wrote the books based upon me interviewing 30 well-known dog experts and veterinarians. And I'll show you a bit of the inside of the paperback books. As you can see, it contains lovely images and few designer elements. I'll show you the inside of the ebooks as well. You can easily read them on your phone, tablet, PC or laptop or in your e-reader if you like. I sell my books on three different platforms and two different languages. The first one is my own WordPress website in the Netherlands. 82% of the earlier mentioned revenue came from my own website in the Netherlands. In other words, I made $223,320 in book sales through my own WordPress website. 13% of the revenue of book sales came from partner sales. And you can compare this by selling books on Amazon. It's basically the same thing, but then a Dutch version of Amazon. In other words, I made $35,595 through that platform. So 95% of the revenue came from me selling my self-published books in the Netherlands. Then we have the third platform and the second language I sell my books in. Recently, I translated my books into English and published them on Amazon. Last year in 2020, I made $548 in revenue through Amazon book sales. So that's only 0.2% of my total income of the previous year. So my four books are available as an ebook, audiobook, paperback and in two languages. But I didn't start like this of course. I also didn't start with these four books all at once. I started with one book and published it as an ebook only on July 19, 2016. At the beginning of 2017, I published my other three books as an ebook. In the first year with only one ebook in 2016, I made close to $2,000. In my second year in 2017, with three new ebooks, I made $25,461. One year later, in 2018, I decided to self-publish them as a paperback. Again, one year later, in 2019, I decided to translate the books into English. I consider this project successful and I'm genuinely grateful for that and I'm happy about the outcome. On Reddit, I posted my story. I asked if anyone had any questions for me if they had a similar goal to the outcome I created with my four self-published books. I expected some questions and responses, but not that much. Only 19 hours after the Reddit post, the post got upvoted 264 times and I received tons of questions and positive feedback. The idea of this video is to answer the questions I received on Reddit to make sure more people can learn from the experience I've had in my self-publishing journey. So the first question I received was how did you find the experts to interview? Well, I just googled on dog expert and veterinarian and checked what credentials they had. After that, I sent them an email or called them if there was a phone number available and explained why I contacted them. The second question I received was how did you conduct the interviews? Well, I created an extensive survey with the tool SurveyMonkey. I think it took them around one to two hours to answer all the questions in the survey. If I had any questions regarding one of the answers they gave in the survey, I emailed them or call them for further explanation. So the third question, how did you bring traffic to your website? The moment I published the first ebook, I had around 10,000 organic Google visitors every month. They came to my website because I published blog posts and did search engine optimization to rank high in Google. Nowadays, I have around 100,000 visitors to my website every single month, whereas roughly 18% is paid traffic, mostly Google search ads. I have explored Facebook ads, but they weren't that profitable for me. So the fourth question I received was, did you do any active marketing or did you just let it sit and forget about it? And yes, I did a lot of marketing. Without the marketing, I don't believe I would have had any sales. So what did I do? So the first thing I did before ever thinking about publishing a book was creating a blog and publishing blog posts. In other words, creating an audience. I became an expert in search engine optimization and made sure my website ranked high in Google. I now had visitors coming to my website. So the next thing I did was I created a free ebook with valuable tips for new puppy owners 
and distributes the free ebook in my blog posts. Everyone can download the free ebook when they fill in their name and email address. By doing so, I was able to directly communicate with my website visitors through email. I created automatic emails, meaning the moment someone downloaded the free ebook, they received my emails. I sent emails mostly every other day. And people love the tips and they still do. I still use this marketing technique today. I have more than 30,000 email subscribers now. By directly communicating with my audience through email, I surveyed them to know precisely what problems they had. Before publishing my first ebook, I also started a podcast where I interviewed experts. These podcast episodes are about 30 to 45 minutes long and people really like the content. And besides the podcast, I also started a YouTube channel to share tips. All of these marketing channels build trust and more eyeballs to the brand. And besides the podcast and YouTube channel, I had a Facebook page and a Facebook group to interact with each and one another. I had all of these things in place before I ever started writing my first book. Of course, all of these things weren't as good and professional as they are right now, but I did start with them before publishing my first ebook. So question number five. How often do you publish a month? So I don't publish every month. I only published four books. That's it. I believe most of the time spent should be on promoting the books instead of writing new books. So the sixth question I received was how much did you pay for copy editing, proofreading, cover design, ebook formatting, etc. My answer to this is that I didn't hire a proofreader until I published my books as paperbacks. That was like two years later. I firstly rolled with my ebooks and yes, they had some grammar and styling errors. The first designer I hired for my first ebook cost me around 400 euros. The reason it was this cheap was that she was still a student. And the thing with cheap designers is that you need to give lots of direction else you won't receive the quality you're hoping for. I also bought professional images for the books and that resulted in around 300 euros. So the moment I took the decision to add these paper bags to the mix, I hired an editor. And my books together are around 60,000 words and to edit that cost me around 1200 euros. My books aren't that thick as you can see. I could have found a cheaper editor but the editor I ended up working with did so much more than just removing the grammar errors. And my advice for you if you're about to hire an editor is to hire a good one that doesn't only remove the grammar errors. To translate my books in English I hired a Dutch translator to translate the Dutch text into English and that cost me around 2500 euros. After that I hired a Native American to proofread to make sure it's correct American English. And that cost me $600 for the four books. Remember I only started with the English books after a few years. It was around 2019 I started with the English books I think. The so question number seven was pulling in that amount through your website must mean you have a high profile website. How long did it take you to get your website at that level? And how does it rank on relevant search terms on Google? Well, I created the website when I was still in college back in 2011. Just a simple WordPress blog of a couple of dollars. I made 20 or so blog posts based upon the keywords I found to rank in Google on those specific terms. The moment I started with the blog, I didn't plan to write a book though. I was just experimenting with creating a blog and making some money with Google AdSense. From 2015 and forward, I really spent most of my time on this single project. Still, it's not that all my time was spent on ranking the website hiring Google. Question number eight is, what costs have been involved in getting the website to this level? How much it costs to reproduce similar results with a different website mostly depends on how much time you are willing to invest yourself in it. In 2019, for instance, I hired a text writer to write long quality blog posts of three to 5,000 words each. He wrote around 40 blog posts and every blog post cost me around 200 to 300 euros. I could have done it myself, but I chose to spend my time elsewhere. And do note, and this is very important, it is only since 2019 that I hired a tax writer. I started a blog way earlier and did everything myself at first. At this right moment, there is no active text writer writing blog posts any longer. I also hired someone to help me with SEO. Not that I couldn't do it myself, 
but because I wanted to spend my time elsewhere. And again, I did everything myself at first. From the moment the book sales went up from 2018 and 2019, I began hiring freelancers. This SEO guy also cost me around 300 to 400 euros per month. I think he helped me for over one and a half years or so. I also purchased another website for 400 euros or so with some decent Google rankings and redirected that website to my website. That really helped. Now I also do sponsorships that help generate better SEO results and other partner deals, but that's definitely not what I started out with. Then we have question number nine. How have you marketed the books? Google ads, Amazon ads, etc, etc. So please re-listen to my earlier answers on how I marketed my Dutch books. In summary, nowadays 18% of my Dutch website's traffic comes from paid traffic, mostly Google search ads. The rest of it is all organic, social referrals and direct traffic. Again, please re-listen to my earlier given answers. Regarding my English books, I have Amazon ads for the English books, but I have the ads on a very low CPC, meaning I don't receive much traffic from the ads. CPC means cost per click. I drive most of the traffic to my English books through the YouTube channel. I started in late 2019 for my English books. I published 16 videos on the channel and I received up until today 153,000 views and 500 to 800 views daily. All of this is organic, meaning it doesn't cost any money, only my time to produce those videos. So again, I didn't send any paid traffic to my YouTube videos. Still, my English books need much more of my attention but I need to find the motivation to get started with that. I do see potential in the YouTube channel, so I'm probably going to publish more videos to that channel this year. I also have an English website, but I haven't spent that much time on search engine optimization yet for that. Question number 10. Oh, this should be interesting. I'm also a Dutch author, although I write English, speculative fiction. What are you doing for marketing in the Netherlands? Do you do POD or use a printer for small batches? Any tips for a fellow Dutch author? Thanks for your time. Firstly, hello fellow Dutchman. Thank you for your question. What I do as regards to marketing, I believe I pretty much answered that question in my earlier answers. If not, please let me know in the comments if you have any specific questions. Regarding your second question about whether I do print on demand, POD, or print for small batches, I need to do one of those. What I did, I contacted around 20 or so book printing companies for a price quotation and went with the cheapest ones. And I'm not saying it's always best to go with the cheapest ones, but in this case, I felt it was the right call for me. On the first go, I ordered 4,000 paperback books, 1,000 paperbacks of each of the books. I have four books, remember? The second time I ordered 7,000 books, and the third time I ordered 20,000 books. I started books in different locations. A couple of thousand books at my house, some at my parents' house, and some at a warehouse. The more you order, the less money you pay per book and thus more profit. Question number 11. This is great info and amazing timing for me. Just set out to write a non-fiction book based on my industry. Can I ask, did you identify underserved niches when planning out your books? If so, how did you go about it? If not, how did you come up with the structure of your books? Did you just try to write the best training books possible or did you focus on some specific areas? Thanks very much. It's great to hear from people who have had success in non-fiction. First off, cool you're about to start with your books. Congratulations. And to answer your first question, did you identify underserved niches when planning out your books? If so, how did you go about it? Well, I didn't plan anything. Before I ever came up with writing a book, I started a blog that later became the foundation for my book launches and sales. In the beginning, I just wanted to make some money with Google Ads or affiliate marketing, I believe. I went with the topic dogs because I was overly interested in dogs at the time and I always wanted a dog when I was younger. So I started reading about dog behavior and such when I became a little older. And I'm not saying this is the best way to go about starting a blog or a self-publishing business, but that's how I got started back then. And to answer your second question, how did I come up with the structure of my books? Well, I surveyed my audience. And what do I mean with my audience? I mean my website visitors and the people on my email list. I asked them questions like what their biggest problem was related to raising their puppy. The answers lay the foundation for chapters of my books. Question number 12. This seems like a long process and a lot of work. 
Thank you for showing us the bottom of the iceberg. Question, do you live at home with your parents or did you have them finance your journey? First off, you're welcome. And to answer your question, I don't live with my parents nor did they finance this journey. It doesn't cost that much to start a blog or publish a first ebook though. I basically paid for all the other costs that came later with the money earned from the book sales. The moment I started writing my books, I lived by myself and I had my nine to five job. My 9-to-5 job paid my bills and therefore I wasn't in a rush to make money as fast as possible. This is pretty important if you're starting out. I could focus on creating quality products and building an audience. As of now, I'm self-employed since 2017 and live with my girlfriend in a rental property. I'm filming this video in our living room. Question number 13. Did you pay them? If not, why did they do such a long survey? So this is a good question. The experts who took the time to answer the first survey didn't get paid because I didn't know what to expect or how long it would take. The experts that filled in the surveys for the other three books did get paid. I first paid them their hourly wage and for the upcoming surveys we agreed upon a fixed price of around 65 euros per fill-in survey. And I'm going to end this video here since it's already a pretty long video. I will publish a part 2 of this Q&A though, probably next week since I saw many more questions coming in. And if you see this video in the future, part 2 will probably be already added to the description and here next to me. And if you like this video of me doing a Q&A session, please give this video a thumbs up so more people can find it. Make sure to also share it with a friend who you think is also into self-publishing. Also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I publish videos on Mondays and Thursdays. Lastly, if your goal is similar to such an outcome I created with my self-published books, please let me know if you have any questions for me. I'm happy to answer them to help you further along in your self-publishing journey. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll meet again.